It's the MMA Insiders on ESPN Radio, 1100 and 98.9 FM. I was 222 pounds in the first fight, and now I'm like 260. So that's 38 pounds of whoop-ass difference. I was fired up. That was Alistair Overeem talking about his uh, weight gain. He weighed 256 today. Remember that guy used to cut to light heavyweight. He's massive. Uh, he is in the main event. We'll break that down. He's going up against uh, Fabricio Verdum. Again, we've got Strike Force this weekend. Then you've got uh, UFC on Versus coming up in Pittsburgh. Then UFC 132 is back in town the week after that. Uh, we'll be out at a PT's. We'll tell you what location this coming week, and you can watch – all the UFC pay-per-views at PTs. There's uh, four different spots at show them. Buffalo and 215, Sunset and Pecos, Stewart and Nellis, and Spring Mountain and Arville. Kevin Ioli's here from Yahoo. Matt Mitrione is in studio with us. Rising heavyweight prospect. You guys were just talking off the air about the growth from tough. And you had some interesting stuff, Matt, to say about how quickly guys can go from kind of looking like so-so on the show in that controlled atmosphere, but the fact that you get to work with unreal trainers your your leap forward can be amazing absolutely i think that's one of the things that uh um you know i i think that's why i think that tough has been such a good breeding ground for for talent um it's because once you get off like you you're kind of showing okay this is how you can really train this is like and you learn a couple of secrets you know about hey this is what other people do that are highly successful and this is why they're so successful and then what, as long as you keep those and maintain those work you know that work ethic or those work habits that you develop over the, that six week period um you know I, I think that you can really develop quickly and on top of that like you get a little, little bit of a name so people want to help you a little bit more you know because you can you can bring them a little bit of notoriety also as long as you do well and so i think that you get uh, a better opportunity to work with better coaches and travel a little bit more because i think the days of staying in one gym for the rest of your career are over and so the more you can bounce around and kind of get a couple more secrets and get a little bit um i think is better for everybody do you think matt when you look at the overall athlete that's coming in mma the guys that are trying out for tough that they're better because it seems to me that you know now you can be training for two years and be at the world-class level and be able to fight at strike force or ufc level and be competitive whereas you know maybe three four years ago you know you there was no chance of that you know you were on the smaller shows and it took a lot longer so it seems to me maybe the one uh you know x factor is that the quality of athletes coming into the sport is better um yeah i can't really argue that um yeah i mean i think it's pretty legit really uh i think that uh if i think i think now that MMA is more socially acceptable that now like people can be like, you know what? Uh, grandma won't be so disappointed or, you know, mom, mom won't be incredibly bummed out and, uh -huh. you know, we'll, we'll admit to it now. So I think that's something, you know, uh, so I would say that's okay. And even like, like now with like the, the strike, I'm surprised more NFL guys haven't really been grinding it out. You know, haven't like, like I'm surprised, I'm surprised more NFL guys are doing boxing because to me, boxing is so much more dangerous than MMA. Yeah. Uh, you know, like especially when they're worried about head, head damage and concussions and stuff. I mean, kind of surprises me. You've been in town working with Extreme Couture, which is an interesting choice because they're not, it's not really like a heavyweight laden camp. So, what have you, who you've been working with and what kind of improvements? Well, I came out here uh, primarily to work with Coach Neil Melanson, uh, one of the best catch wrestlers in the world uh, and giant body. Who, by the way, is a heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> He's a huge dude. He yeah. Is, he is a big boy. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so, I, I came out here to work with him uh, and really started working on my, uh, my, my wrestling slash submission game. Uh, I wanted to get away from jiu jitsu. So, uh, but I was fortunate. There's a uh, Mo Jackson, a six foot eight guy, so he really helped me prepare for uh, uh, for Christian, uh, Christian Moorcraft guy I'm fighting. Uh, but then Sean McCorkle came out f uh, for me. Another guy from home came out to help me out, uh, Anthony Gomez. And then um, Todd Duffy came through. And then there's uh, actually there's probably like six legit heavyweights out there you know, right. that weigh anywhere from 245 to 280. I mean, they're at, at Couture, so I mean, so we are scrapping quite a bit, man. So how's the wrestling now? Uh, I, I feel like I'm, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I really wanted to work on my offensive wrestling, um, and I get to my feet relatively well when I, when I really want to, uh, as long as I don't think about submissions all the time. And uh, I feel like my takedowns are really starting to come along. So I'm ready. I'm ready to scrap. I'm ready to show uh, the new wrinkle in my game if it gets to that point. Warcraft is massive. Yeah, we're going we, to see you shooting doubles on Christian Warcraft? I can see me punching him in his face. <laughs> and then if, uh, if I want to take it to the ground, you, know, you might see that. But, um, you know, if he wants to trade off with me, I don't know if he'll be able to get me down. But if he wants to trade off with me, we'll, we'll, we'll dance a pretty dance. All right, we got some massive guys on this card. So we'll rapid fire. we got like four minutes. Matt Mitrione's in studio with us. It's uh, the MMA Insiders. We take it from 6 to 7 every Friday. Kevin Iole's here with us as well. All right, well, let's go through the fights. We'll go uh, main event first. Overeem, 256. Verdum, Verdum's actually a lot bigger guy than people give him credit for. He's 6'5". He weighed in at 246. 
Is he big enough, though, because he has to grapple. He's not going to stand the entire time and beat Verdum. Is he big enough to get Overeem in his clutch and get him to the ground? I, I like Verdum, uh, excuse me, Overeem to win the fight. Um, I, I think he's plenty big enough. I don't think that's an issue, but I just think uh, that uh, Alistair is the better overall fighter. His stand-up, uh, he's got su- such a variety of strikes, and so I, I, I like Overeem to win the fight. Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over him just because I, I mean, jiu-jitsu is awesome if you can get somebody to the ground. I don't know how well he'll be able to. I don't know how his shot is. I don't know how his takedown, his takedown offense is, yeah. uh, Verdum's. So, I mean, if you can't get uh, outside of the ground, I mean, good luck, bro. Yep, yep. I do think he has flaws, and I do think they'll be un- unveiled or uncovered in later rounds because I, I actually I keep hearing about how great Overeem striking is. Some of the stuff in the K1, I, I think he's a little mechanical and slow, and a lot of it's based on powers. Knees and kicks are great. His punches, we'll, we'll find out. But well, this fight, he, he'll be all right. And that's why I said he, he has a variety of strikes. You know, it's not like he's just throwing hands. I mean, he's got his kicks. He's got his knees. And I think, that if, isn't it, Matt, true when you, when you have more things to worry about than just hands coming at you that it makes, it, it makes a guy more difficult to fight? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, the more weapons they can throw your way, I mean, the, the more complicated it gets. Uh, you know, he's not just throwing ones and twos. So, you know, and, and um, you know, I was talking to Todd Duffy. He said the knee is what really screwed him up. He yeah. said the knee took everything out of him. So, what did I mean, Duffy say about strength? Like, you know, just getting in there with him in terms of pure strength. Because Todd's gigantic, but yeah, Todd's, he looked—he looked, was—I mean, he's he looked incredibly like he, strong. Todd's he looked like strong. he was getting thrown around like a rag doll at times by Overeem. Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, you know, his strength was was was, uh, was you know, definitely was there. Yeah. But uh, he said that uh, his explosiveness, and he said one thing against Overeem you can't do is you can't go backwards. Yep. Barnett uh, today, you know, he's not—he's kind of a not a great body guy. You know, he's—he's going to look a little a uh, little schlubby at times. Two fifty-six, but I mean, legit heavyweight. You know, six four. I think again, another guy bigger than people. Uh, give him credit for. Rogers is massive as well. He's 6'4", 6'5", 258, but the skill set's here. There's a big gap. Yeah, to me, to me, I mean, uh, Josh Barnett is is probably the most talented guy in this field with the best overall game. But my question about Barnett is he hasn't been active against top competition. I don't think that's going to affect him in this fight. I think he's far better than uh, Brett Rogers. I don't think Brett Rogers really has much uh, other than a you know big overhand right that, that would scare uh, uh, Josh Barnett. But so I I think Barnett wins. The question is going forward whether that lack of uh, activity against top uh, contenders is going to hurt him. I say Barnett will win by submission. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Barnett win win by submission. I might even say some nasty kind of leg lock yeah. that nobody wants to see. I think the other thing with Brett Rogers too. Uh, he knows he's kind of a novice, and he got destroyed by Overeem. Uh, he got knocked out by Fedor. I don't know that his confidence is going to be there, especially against a guy who is as cocky and he's been talking trash and kind of getting under his skin. T- 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 talking trash in MMA is so overrated. Drives me nuts. Like, <laughs> like, like really, like like. I mean, it's okay to say, yeah, I'm going to punch in your face because that's something that's going to happen. You know, yeah. like talking like this dude, Moorcraft, talking, I'm going to beat the piss out of you. Yeah. Well, really, dude? Yeah, really? but you, I think you're different, though. Yeah. You, you played in the NFL. You, you played college football. You, you're a confident guy. I, I think it does. You don't think it ever breaks anybody? You don't think it gets in people's heads going in a fight sometimes? Uh, well, I, I know it does. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of fights where it does do that, I guess. Okay. But, like, for me, it's more like, come on, f- right. figure it out. You're, you're a professional here. Okay. You don't go to the office to, to, to the water tub and talk shit, talk trash about whoever, you know? Well, we do it here. We do sports radio, so we do it. That's, that's We're going to we talk about you like that. <laughs> <laughs> Watch her. Hey, uh, the other fights on this card, there's actually they, – they have good heavyweight prospects, I think. You like Cormier? Cormier's going against Jeff Munson. Munson's a, a real good grappler, submission guy. Old, you know, 40. I, I, I like Cormier. I think he's got, obviously, a great wrestler. I think he's got some uh, good skills. I want to see the striking come up, yep. see, see you know, him be more than a one-dimensional guy. I haven't seen that yet, but I think uh, you know, he's got the talent uh, to become a factor. I think DC spent a lot of time on his striking, so I, I, I look forward to it. I think it'll be a good fight. Um, you know, Munson can his top control is suffocating. You know, and it can he can make for a very long fight. Uh, but I think DC. I think it'll be a great fight. I think the wrestling will really kind of match out. But uh, I think DC probably takes it. Overeem's brother, who's smaller, he's two thirty five. He's going against Chad Griggs. You like Griggs? You like Chad Griggs as a prospect? I mean, when I first saw him, I didn't like him, but you know what? The guy keeps winning, so uh, you know you got to give him credit. I, I think I'll go with uh, Overeem's brother here, but I, I don't think it's going to be an easy fight for uh, for Valentin. I who do, we'll close in the about 30 seconds here. Who do you think is going to win this tournament? Uh, Barnett. Yeah. I think Barnett's my guy. Okay. I, I go it over him. All right. I think I might go Silva. I'm really, I'm really all over Antonio Silva. I think he's the, uh, the sleeper. By the way, other good fights on this card. Uh, Masvidal and Nunes. I'm a big Nunes fan. Not a great wrestler, but really good boxing. 
And then uh, watch for uh, Jay Z Cavalcante. He's kind of he's kind of on the comeback trail. Kind of disappeared a little bit, not active, but he's got that's going to be a good fight too against Justin Wilcox. And you didn't ask me, and I know we only have a couple seconds left. Who do I like in uh, Pittsburgh to win the uh, Mitrion uh, uh, Moorcraft <laughs> fight? You love Moorcraft, I know you do. You're not going <laughs> to say it in his face. Though. I've been I've been all over Moorcraft since uh, day one. <laughs> I want I want you to pull a Marcus Jones, walk right over to Matt, and get in his face. That is one of the best TV moments I've ever seen because any guy in a bar who had someone standing right in his face. That was brilliant when Matt's just he's turned to the side like, whatever, dude. Yeah. That takes some stones. I get paid to fight. There you go. <laughs> That's what he said on the show. <laughs> Thanks to Matt Mitrione. Thanks to uh, Scott Coker. For Kevin, I'm Steve. For Reynolds as well. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate it. Wow. Great stuff, Matt. Thank you. Right.